Hey guys, welcome into a new video testing new makeup releases. This is going to be a drugstore try on basically as you guys saw from the title. Uh, we do have some releases from the Ulta Beauty brand. We do have some from Revlon. There was a new lippy that dropped so I picked that up. Some ColourPop stuff. It's a ton of eye products. I was just really into all the eye products that launched and most of this stuff is like super bright, fun, like beachy spring on this super dreary January day. So we're going to create something fun today. As you guys can tell, I have my brows and my base on. I have no concealer or powder or anything like that yet because I do have some new releases from NYX in the color corrector slash concealer world. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let me pull up my app with all of the information. Let's start with these ones from NYX. These are called the Pro Fix It Stick Color Correcting Concealers. I'm actually really excited to see these because they came out with like what they're considering different versions of concealers in addition to color correctors, which I thought was awesome. And they came out with like a pink and a peach shade as opposed to kind of just a peach shade for fair skin. I hate when they do that because sometimes it just ends up looking orange. <laughs> Absolutely horrendous and basically does nothing for me. So I'm hopeful for this. I love the little details on this. It says the benefits, the quickest way to fix it all. Dark circles fixed, blemishes fixed, discoloration fixed, redness you get it. Pro Fix Sticks to conceal, correct, and brighten in a quickie. Creamy stick formula infused with hyaluronic acid for the smoothest glide ever. Never dry, never draggy. Available in 24 pro shades with a buildable medium coverage and a natural skin-like finish. It's a quick fix to last transfer resistant formula that lasts up to 12 hours. I did read this before I got started. It says pro tip layer the comfortable and breathable formula flawlessly under and over foundation. It's a quick fix. So I did decide to go ahead and put just a light BB cream on because I felt like I could just put this over it. So I actually picked up two shades. I picked up a pink, which is I guess number 0 0.2. And then I picked up one that's more of a concealer shade and it's in 0 0.3 Alabaster. So let's swatch both of these. It's just a, a twist up component. It's not usually my preferred concealer style. These are very, very creamy. They seem to be like a little bit dewy, more so in the concealer shade is a little bit more dewy than the one in the color correcting shade. So I'm gonna take the pink one on my left side because that's always what I say is like my darker eye, my more problem eye. And I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna be pretty generous with it, I think. It drug a little, but that's fine. We're not mad at it. All right, let's blend this in. Oh, this is perfect. Yes, this is great. I mean, it didn't conceal everything, like all of the blueness, but this is exactly what you needed in the color correcting world for fair skin. It's like perfect. In terms of shading, the coverage might not be like fabulous, but the shade is absolutely perfect. You know what, I'm gonna take just a little bit on this inner corner right here. I always forget to do in here and I have quite a bit of darkness in there. Look at that. Concealed that right up. Even some of my concealers don't do that. Oh, I love it. What I will do, because I probably won't do a check-in today, is pop up on the screen somewhere as I'm editing this, just tell you guys how this ended up wearing, whether it started to like get dry or whether it sunk into fine lines or the coverage just faded. I mean, this does claim to be transfer resistant for up to 12 hours. So we'll see how long it lasts through the day. I'll keep track of it, but I probably won't come back up here to do like a full wear test on this, but I will like let you guys know. Now let's go into this other concealer shade that looked a little bit more dewy. I'm gonna use a brush on the other side as well. Yeah, this feels like a little bit of a thicker consistency. This is a very light shade too. I don't know if I love it. I don't love the shade necessarily. It's a little bit too bright. I always try to get a concealer shade that matches my foundation because I do not like to brighten my eyes because I do have hollows. And so I feel like that it like accentuates the hollows. You can really see them more when you're brightening the eye. And sometimes even like the lines on the under eye, I try not to go a lighter shade because I feel like sometimes you can even see those a little bit more. I think it's okay. I think it concealed fine, but I feel like this is a thicker formula. So far, not a super fan of this, the way that I felt about the corrector. I just feel like it's a bit of a thinner formula. It just even seems drier on the swatch. This just feels creamier overall in the pink shade. Yeah, just a bigger fan of the color corrector. Okay, moving on. There are a ton of different lip products that I picked up. So I got the Paradise Pout 
This is the Lip Plumping Gloss from Ulta Beauty. I also picked up, oh goodness gracious, where is the other one? The PH Lipstick in Cabana Kiss, I guess from the Ulta Beauty brand. I guess it was just those two things in addition to the Revlon. So while we're doing our eyes, I wanted to throw on this one. I did open the package just to kind of see what this looked like. This is the PH Changing Lip Gloss. Can you guys hear this? It does sound like kids makeup, like straight up kids makeup. It's tropical and wavy. It's okay, but it definitely feels like child's makeup. It wasn't very expensive, and I did notice that most of this stuff is on sale already. I think everything here that I got from the Ulta Beauty collection is all on sale. This normally retails for $10, but it's already on sale for $7. This pH changing one only comes in two colors. The So Wavy, the one that I have is a blue shift, and then they had a pink shift. That's called Hibiscus Haze. The reason I got the blue one is because I had one in the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip, and I really liked the way that blue shift looked. This is like totally detached. Yeah, this is not worth $10. This just feels like extremely cheap. This is the cheapest thing I've ever purchased from the Ulta Beauty brand. Wow, it's immediately pink. It looks blue and the minute it touched my skin, it goes pink. Well, it's pink, <laughs> it's color changing. It goes on pink like immediately as you guys swatch. It's not a staining formula. I was able to wipe it off. It's very comfortable. It's a balm, so it feels like a balm. Oh no, it's called a lipstick. Okay, well, it feels like a balm, basically, or like a really creamy lipstick. This is basically like a pink balm to me. I wouldn't have charged 10 bucks for this. Like, it's sale price, seven bucks, like maybe. I mean, that's fine, I guess, for, you know, the prices these days, but no more than $7. It's not worth it at all. That packaging just felt extremely cheap. The formula is very, very comfortable. I don't even mind the shade. It's a cute little spring slash summer shade. Throw this in my purse. It's a nice balm. I have a lot of nice balms though, you know? All right, let's move on. So I have a ton of different eye products that I want to go into next before I put on like the lip gloss. I got the Tropical Twist Cream Eyeshadow from Ulta Beauty in Palm Trees. So it's like a green shade. But then I also picked up their Color Punch Longwear Liquid Eyeliner from Ulta in the shade Turquoise. So green and turquoise, we're gonna do a fun look, I guess we're gonna have to. And then I'm pretty sure they're trying to dupe like the ColourPop Jelly Mud shadows. This is the Jelly Eyeshadow. And this one is in Vacay Mood, yes, which I believe is like a pinky shade. So we're gonna be all over the place with this. And also I picked up some BFF cream gel liners that ColourPop just dropped. These are the multi-chrome ones. So I picked up three shades. I don't know, we're gonna have to like, you know, get creative here. I picked this up also. It's the Whoopsie Eyeliner Corrector from Ulta Beauty that I really wanted to try to see if it was like worth anything. Cause I do sometimes like make mistakes and then I'm over here like, you know, taking it off and correcting it when I'm trying to do like a wing out here. So it would be nice if I had something that was super effective. Anyway, let's get started with this cream shadow first. And I'm just gonna like lay it down all over. So this normally retails for $10. It's on sale right now for seven. And it comes in three shades. I told you guys I got mine in the shade Palm Trees. They have one that's, white and shell we and then surfs up which is aqua so it doesn't surprise me that i ended up getting this shade it does appear to have like a little bit of shimmer to it it's very very light this is like kind of an all over shade maybe not something that i would use to like deepen with just fun very very creamy i am just gonna go straight in just up here i'm going wild today so hang in there with me you guys Hang in there. And then I'm taking my Kiko Milano 02 brush. I got this in their advent calendar and it's just more dense. It's like a very rounded, dense brush. Um, okay. The shadow stick is more on the sheer side, not super opaque. This side started to look a little bit patchy once I started blending it. I'm not absolutely in love with that. And both the formula and the color, it's just more sheer and it looks a little bit skippy. I don't know, you guys, that was not my absolute favorite. But let's go into this Beach Day Jelly Eyeshadow next. This comes in only two shades and they both look sort of pinky. I guess, well, no, I guess the Vacay Mood is 
very pink and then the other one it also looks pretty pink on the website again retails ten dollars on sale seven dollars this one is the more pinky one in vacay mood this is just a plastic component again just very very cheap overall I, i've never known ulsa to go quite this cheap before I have their stuff and this just feels like the cheapest of everything they've launched. It's not exactly like the Jelly Much Shadows from ColourPop. This is like mostly glitter. It doesn't really pick up. I'll show you guys. Here's what it looked like swatched out. It's pretty. It's just mostly glitter. So like when you put your finger into it, you're not really picking anything up. It's like pushing the product around. Unlike ColourPop, you can kind of like get a little bit of something. This one, you're not really getting a ton. And this is like really, really wet. It's like you try and pick something up and your finger just like kind of goes, this is like a goopy mess. This is awful. This is absolutely worthless. <laughs> like, this is just bad. <laughs> the quality of this is just freaking terrible. I can barely get any real product up on my finger. Uh, it's nicer with a brush. You get more pigmentation, but yeah, it's basically just sparkles. So does it even matter what shade you get? This looks so much more intense in the pot. Now I'm building it up and I kind of feel like it's just, you know, it's just a chunky little mess. All this is. Not that I was a huge fan of the Jelly Mutt Shadows from ColourPop to begin with. I feel like you either love those or hate those, you know? They're a little bit of a more difficult formula to work with anyway. And I feel like they turn pretty quickly. So it wasn't as though I was like looking for an alternative. I just wanted to test their formulation. I just think this is awful. I honestly feel like I'm playing with kids makeup. Let's hope for something better with this plumping lip gloss. So it's called the Paradise Pout Plumping Lip Gloss. It comes in three different shades. I got mine in the shade Flamingo Time, which is the bright pink. It also comes in a red and kind of a nudie shade and just beachy. This does, again, retail for $10 on sale for seven. It says this whole collection was inspired by the vibrant energy of vacation cities from sun-kissed beaches to sizzling summer nights. Our collection embodies the essence of your dream getaway. Unleash your inner glow. I'm on the Ulta website and I'm looking at the description and it says essence of you dream getaway. They totally missed the R on their own site. <laughs> this is also plastic. So feels very cheap. This looks like super thick inside the tube. Ooh, this just looks kind of milky. Oh, this is extremely sticky, you guys. One of the most sticky glosses ever. This is awful, Ulta. There's the shade, there's the swatch. It's just milky, goopy. No, nothing even on this doe foot. It's weird. That's honestly just a bad joke. Oh. And of course, it's the fiery plump. It's not a cooling plumping. So it's actually just burning the heck out of my lips right now. There is nothing redeeming with this Ulta collection drop at all so far. It's like I rubbed a jalapeno all over my lips right now. So far with this Ulta collection stuff, this cheap old thing right here in this Claire's makeup is the nicest thing in terms of formula and performance. I'm just at a loss for words. Actually, I'm not. Let's move into some ColourPop before I lose all faith in Ulta Beauty. So I did pick this up from the ColourPop website and I ended up getting three shades. I think there were, I can't remember how many total, but I feel like it was a decent drop. But right now it looks like on the Ulta website, they're retailing for $9 a piece, same price, but they only have six shades there. So it's waterproof, multi-chrome flips. So I have three shades, purple, blue, and green basically, which I thought was a decent range. I do know on the ColourPop website, they'll let you buy like sets. You can get two or three different sets and I think you save a little bit of money. So this Actin' Up one shade is the bright metallic purple flipping to bronze and deep green. This one in Wild Idea is the green one 
and it is a bright metallic lime green flipping to true green to teal. And then the final kind of turquoisey one, I think this one's my favorite. This is Power Trip. This is a rich metallic green teal flipping to blue to violet. I just recently discovered the BFF cream gel liners from ColourPop and I think they're amazing. I've even like equated them to like high quality liners and somebody was like, really? You think they're high quality? Yeah, I don't know what it takes to be high quality in your book, but uh, for me, it just has to perform well. And I think they did that. Sometimes people's comments are just interesting. Ooh, the green one is freaking lovely. These are much creamier by comparison to the Moira Beauty ones. And these have a little bit more like metallicness to them. And the Moira Beauty Supernova Multichromes, they last all day. I mean, I have swatched them before and forgot to like take off the swatches right away and they ended up staining me. I don't think they have like the biggest flip to them though. I think some of them have a little bit more flip than others. These ones honestly seem to have more of a flip. So there's the green. Surprisingly, that one is the blue one. And then that one is the purple one. I mean, you can really see the flip on these. Hopefully it is showing up on camera, but it's a really nice flip. But again, I feel like these are creamier than the ones from Moira Beauty. But I like the shade ranges. I feel like they, they got everything here. By the way, my lips are on fire and it doesn't even look to be plumping anything, just burning me, that's all. So let's move into the eyeliner next. I'm gonna put this on so we can try the whoopsie pen. This comes in 10 different shades, which is really nice. And if it's a good formula, it's a nice drop because it is supposed to be waterproof and long wearing and they have a pretty decent shade range. I ended up getting mine in the shade turquoise. It's the Color Punch Longwear Liquid Eyeliner and it's $11 normally. It looks like it is on sale for $7.70. It's supposed to be full coverage felt tip applicator. So it's a felt tip, but it's the, you know, the long kind of brush strokey kind. And it's supposed to have a matte finish. It looks pretty opaque, but it definitely looks like a wetter formula. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but like a ton of product is kind of picking up at the base of the brush. So it could be a trickier, a little bit of a wetter formula. Yeah, it kind of looks a little clumpy. I wish this felt tip was thinner too. It's a little bit thick. Like a finer felt tip point would have been nice, but we're gonna try it. It went on fine. It stays opaque through the whole swipe, but I made a mess. So we're gonna test this out. I didn't make a mess out here, I made a mess in there. So let's test this guy out. I don't know exactly what to expect here, but I'm just gonna go over this spot that I messed up with the whoopsie liner and see what it does. Perfect, took it right off. Uh, is this the best thing that I bought all day? I think so. Look at that, you can't even tell that I messed up. That works really well. Hopefully this pen doesn't dry out fast. Wow, that was really, really nice, you guys. So same thing, retails for $10, on sale for $7, and it only comes in clear. But it, like, it literally did the job without any real hassle. So I like this, I feel like this is worth it. I don't know who else makes it, cause I don't, I've never seen it before, but I don't know, that seemed to perform really, really well. I, I think it was a little bit too wet. Like I feel like this tip is just too big. I was like definitely getting it all, all over my eyelashes. Yeah, see, it's like all over my eyelashes. There's just like no way to avoid that because that tip is so wet and so thick. There are so many other colorful liners on the market that I just, I don't feel like you need this from Ulta. It's nice and opaque and it definitely dries matte and it dries quickly. It's just goopy. Like it gets all over my lashes. Mm. Mm -mm, no. Well, these ones from ColourPop come off a lot easier than the ones from Moira Beauty. So if you're looking for a longer lasting formula, the Moira Beauty Supernova Multichromes are just better if you're looking for a multi-chrome liner, I think. So I just grabbed this, which is pretty comparable to the liquid liner that we were using. It's just cleaner, it's thinner, like it's a much finer tip. I get it more precise than the one from Ulta. That one's just kind of a, a nightmare. So, you know, the eye-catching dip liners from Moira are better. Then I pulled out three. I have seven of the shades of the eight that dropped from Moira, the Supernova Multichrome Gel Liners. Just so you guys can like see what some of them look like. Here is a green one, which looks, you know, shimmery, but it doesn't have like a super strong flip. It's blue to green. 
it's it's pretty i just feel like maybe the ColourPop ones have a little bit more like overall flip to them especially this bluish purple one the one i just showed you was in raya and this one is in the shade buzz which basically doesn't have really any flip at all it's kind of like purple to blue not the flip i would have given it really but i feel like these are just a better formula they dry down so fast and they become so much more waterproof so quickly they're so like i just swatched those and those are harder to get off than the color pop ones that sat there for a minute of course we'll test them but yeah on in terms of like this liner no and i picked up something i want to put on it's the essence i heart extreme crazy volume waterproof mascara this is not new this has been out for a while but i just picked this up because i saw somebody else on youtube say that they really loved this mascara and this is like my favorite style wand i didn't even know essence like made this so i'm down to give this four dollar mascara a shot so i'm going to throw this on to see how i like it because i'd love to have a drugstore option for my favorite kind of volumizing waterproof mascaras well i don't know about this mascara even though it's my style wand and like ideally this is kind of what i'm looking for i don't know what it's doing to my lashes it's kind of making them clumpy and like frayed out that's not really the volume that i'm looking for i think it's a little bit of a wetter formula too than i normally like it's just kind of making the outer part of my lashes a little bit clumpier than i would love without giving me too much pigment like this is definitely getting chunkier and clumpier as i continue to use it mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know about this one i genuinely feel like i'm playing with kids makeup today that's what i feel like i liked it on the left side a little bit better I think I liked it as it started to like dry out just maybe a touch. This is definitely going to be a mascara that I have to continue testing because first impressions on this are just first impressions on any mascara really. It's definitely a decent volumizing mascara, but I'd like to see what it's like when I didn't just accidentally get myself with a ton of that liner from Ulta. And I'm going to go in with the green color, the one in Wild Idea on the lower waterline. I feel like this one shows up the absolute most. That goes into the waterline like butter. Like honestly, these are very, very creamy. Way creamier than the Moira ones. And I feel like you really see the flip on these. These of course are liners that I would normally test like not in the waterline. I would like to just use them all over. Okay, so there is just one more thing left from the Ulta Beauty collection. It's the Golden Hour Liquid Highlighter. It comes in two different shades. It's in Art Deco Glam, which looks pink, and then Golden Sands, which is like a goldy kind of champagne-ish color. This does retail again for $10, on sale for seven. It is the rollerball style, so I'm pretty sure what they're trying to dupe is the iconic London rollerball. I do like that this is actually glass packaging. I don't know how else they would get away with something like this without making it glass, but I do love the iconic London rollerball formula. It's super duper intense super creamy this one from ulta seems like it's having trouble kind of getting warmed up it's it's on the lighter side like in terms of intensity but it's decent the one from iconic london i fell in love with last year but it's a little bit more intense you definitely get more that kind of comes on the rollerball there's the iconic london one and there is the ulta so ulta is a little bit softer but it's also less icy too so I'm gonna take this one and roll it on just like I do with the iconic London one. Yeah, not like a ton comes off on this roller ball. Now nothing is coming off at all. Hello? Well, it was working. Legitimately nothing is coming up anymore. I mean, you can take this off, like this component and the product is just loose in there. But what does this take? It's no longer even nothing is coming i actually had high hopes for this and i feel like this is just totally a dud too i got it on one side it dries really well like it has a decent dry down but like where what happened what happened oh there it goes okay well if it gets stuck you really gotta like shake it downward it's much more intense when it gets to the face i just don't want this thing making a giant mess all right, that's better. My iconic London one doesn't do that. 
But I wanna say that the finish is pretty darn comparable. I like the way it's sitting on the skin and I also like the shade. Ooh, <laughs> boy, this whole video almost became an entire nightmare because of this product not coming out. But once I like manhandled this thing, it did end up coming out. So thankfully I do like the way that this looks. It's not sticky whatsoever. It's actually a really nice formula quite comparable to the one from Iconic London. I don't think that's like everybody's preferred style of liquid highlighter. I just happened to really enjoy the rollerball. I thought it was like innovative way to get a really liquidy formula to the cheeks. And I really liked the formula and the finish of it. So that was one of my favorite products for 2023. It could have been like people's least favorite, but it was my favorite. All right, let's go into the very last product, which is the Revlon Colorstay Limitless Matte. I feel like Revlon does a decent job with some of their matte formulas, not all of them, but I think I'm more partial to like the liquid lip when it comes to their matte formulas. Some of the bullet styles have been just a little bit too drying for me. So this retails for $13.99. This does come in 16 different shades. And I picked up mine in the shade 012 Lead the Way. I do not think we are going to match the eye look today. It's actually not like overly moussey, kind of a thin formula. Don't know how it's gonna dry down. Very, very emollient. Here is a close up on the doe foot. It has a little bit of a pointed kind of curved tip. Let's go in without liner. Ooh. This is really emollient, so, so I feel like you're gonna wanna throw a lip liner down because when it goes on, it's really thin and very emollient and so it's like slipping around. Let's give this a second to dry down. A comfortable 24 hour matte vegan formula. Patented lip hugging applicator is contoured to fit your lips and deliver a smooth coat of vibrant color. I definitely liked the tip. It has hyaluronic acid and upcycled cranberry extract suitable for sensitive lips. A lightweight feel with Adaptive Flex technology for more comfort and flexibility. It is completely dry. Like it almost dried in like sections, like how I ended up laying it on my lips. Oh geez, it's like paint. You're not gonna wanna mess this up. And if you mess it up, you're gonna wanna fix it fast. It has a little bit of stickiness to it. A little bit drying as matte formulas go. It's not bad, but it definitely accentuates my lip lines. Like it's not not dry. Let's throw this pH lipstick on top. This thing is gonna break on me. Yeah, this might be a formula you want to top with a gloss. It might not be something that you end up leaving all on its own. It's definitely sucking natural kind of hydration out of my lips. It's not terrible, but it's not not doing it, if that really makes any sense at all. All right, let me gather my thoughts on all of this stuff. Woo, I don't, I don't know. This was an absolute train wreck. This was a freaking nightmare. I don't even know how long this video is gonna end up being. This was just like one of the worst try-ons that I've had you guys. Literally felt like I was playing with kids makeup the entire time. So let's go through each of these. This is a plastic pass. You don't need this. This feels like it's gonna snap on me every time I put it on my lips. We are basically in kid zone. We're in Claire's, we're shopping. I feel like Claire's even has better makeup than this. This is how I feel about it. This is not worth a dime. I think that the cream shadow stick it was terrible. I ended up covering it up because I just hated it. It was too sheer. It was patchy once I was blending it out. That's a waste of time. This was the stickiest lip gloss again that I've ever had. You didn't need to make this weird milky case with this tiny doe foot applicator in two shades for $10 and it like, you know, felt like a jalapeno. This was way worse than a ColourPop Jelly Mud Shadow. I at least can see some like purpose in that. This just looked like a sparkly, sheer, nonsense, goopy. You can't even like pick up the product. You're just like smushing it around. I actually liked this, but the wand itself is like, it's super inconvenient. Like if you see this, it just makes like a solid mess. Solid, solid mess. The wand is just too big, honestly. It was just getting in my eyelashes and I was like having to wipe it off. It's never the same though. Then the eyelashes kind of just get crunchy. Terrible, terrible. The whoopsie eyeliner, like that was decent. That worked, that was effective. This was the best thing I feel like that I tried, the least problematic thing that I tried from Ulta today. The golden hour liquid highlighter, like this is decent, but yeah, I mean the phew, you know, that I had to do to get it to come back out a little dramatic, I think. The NYX stuff, mm, I don't like the way that the alabaster shade played. I don't know why, but I feel like they were just different formulas. I did not like the way this looked initially. I think it looked more dry than the pink shade. 
I think if you're looking for color correcting in this formula, like the color correcting shades is really where I'd go. The pink one in pink is honestly really, really good. I didn't even lay concealer on top. It didn't cover everything. Like it wasn't a hundred proof, but it was really good. Like the formula wasn't drying me out. So I would reach for this one again, for sure. I just don't think I'm gonna find a use in this. Maybe for priming the eyes, but this is not something that I feel like I would use as a single step for a concealer. I feel like these ColourPop multi-chromes are nice. I would love to play with them a little bit more. They're on the creamier side, and I don't think they're as non-budge as the Moira ones in terms of like comparisons of who does pretty affordable multi-chrome liners. I'll just talk about this. I don't even know how I feel about it yet. Like it's decent, it's nice. I like it more now than when I was first putting it on because I feel like it was just a little bit chunky, but this will be something that I have to keep testing because the formula will continue to dry out. And this was nice when I topped it with that little bit of lipstick or balm, I'm gonna call it a balm. I feel like it added just the right amount of hydration. You know that Revlon makes other ones that are very similar to this. So I don't know that this is necessarily like brand new to their line, something that they've never done. And I happen to think that some of Revlon, like matte lip products tend to look a little bit drying on me, but this one's a decent one. I will let you guys know how it wears somewhere on the screen, but that was my super chaotic kid makeup crazy wild vibrant look that i put together today you guys i hope you enjoyed or didn't it's up to you but i'm out of here and i hope to catch you in the next one bye guys